Hello everybody, my name is Boulevard here for Giant Slayer TV. Yes, the hair changed a little bit, but it's still me, still bringing you deck techs, and today we're going to be talking about the deck formerly known as Draven Ezreal. It was time for that deck to finally get a real name, stop calling it Draven Ezreal, and with the updated list cutting Draven entirely now seemed like the perfect time to do so. So, with the deck no longer being called Draven Ezreal, please help me call it Tribeam Control, a necessary name given that Ezreal and Caitlyn are both from Piltover and Zon, so if you just say, oh, it's the Ezreal Caitlyn, deck then they might not know that it's noxus or what the playstyle of the deck is they might think it's a trap deck a, a freeze deck or something along those lines like timo ezreal was you know it, it gets a little confusing but you say tribeam control everybody's got a pretty good idea of the noxus shell that uh, tribeam improbulator is fitting into so just trying to get the naming convention clear the deck cut draven and that's a really big deal let me reiterate right now that while this deck is based off of draven ezreal it is not draven ezreal it's a little bit less flexible a lot more leaning into the control style of gameplay that the the deck was known for uh, without as many aggressive options. You know, when you cut Draven, you cut all of the discard cards as well, like Sump Dredger, Get Excited, Lost Souls, Rummage, and you also cut the ability to play like an aggro deck. One of the strengths of Draven Ezreal was how much you could masquerade as different archetypes because it was a very hard deck to nail down archetypally because it did depend on the matchups you were playing. If you asked five people what kind of deck Draven Ezreal was between combo, mid-range, control, aggro, all that kind of stuff, you're going to get a few different answers or someone's going to make it up or say, oh, it's a hybrid between these two or these three. Nobody could really agree on it. This one, much more of a control deck. You know, you're not going to be able to throw down a house spider and then throw down a Caitlyn and then throw down a thorn of the rose and have the same kind of impact that you were when you were throwing down like some dredger into twin blade revenant. You know, it's a completely different style of gameplay. You're just a lot less flexible in those kinds of matchups, which is one of the reasons that I'm not as impressed. But, you know, Draven Ezreal really got pushed out after the world championship as players started to refine Bandle City, we noticed that it was pretty hard to run Bandle City decks out of cards, and while you could beat Bandle Tree because you ran Scorched Earth, sometimes you could also just get run over. So, players, back on the deck, what's new? What are we playing instead of all of these discard cards, right? Uh, the first thing is Built Over Peacemaker. One of the great things about being in a wide Bandle City meta is that there's a lot of 1 HP units that cannot get saved by start of round effects. You know, if you pilt over Peacemaker or something, similarly to how powerful Blighted Ravine is as compared to something like Avalanche. You know, you just get to pick off those units for free. It's a little RNG oriented, admittedly, but there's really not much you can do about that. Even if you miss and hit the wrong unit, you've still got Ravenous Flock and Scorched Earth. It's one of the reasons that uh, I really like the Noxian Guillotine alongside the two copies of Scorched Earth that a lot of players are going. Of course, three Ravenous Flock in here as well. And you're really relying on those traps to soften things up that are outside the range of your Mystic Shot and your Peacemakers and all those kinds of things. So you do want to dump in on the traps as much as possible. Not so much that you're running other trap cards in the deck. I think that Caitlyn and the Peacemaker are fine because they go into the top 10. You don't need as many traps as you do in something like a Teemo deck to ensure that your opponent is going to draw them. Station Archivist now fitting into the deck as a 3 of, which makes sense given the uh, more control-oriented shell that you're going for. You really get to double up on either the damage-based removal spells, you know, you find a Mystic Shot and then you get to throw two Mystic Shots at something, or a Mystic Shot and a Peacemaker, Mystic Shot and Flock, what have you, because you're really about stringing together two cards at a time to remove something. It's not often that you're going to be like, you know, Mystic Shot killing a unit against like Pantheon or something like that. You need to find the Scorched Earth or the Noxian Guillotine to pair with it. What this deck is really doing well right now is picking on Bandal City in a way that Draven Ezreal could not previously. The one damage traps are doing miracles against decks that are very low to the ground, you know, all these one health and two health units and things like that. Uh, Piltover, Peacemoker, and Mystic Shot, just six two damage removal spells. If anything gets caught with a, a trap and it, you know, is still alive, you've got the Ravenous Flock, the Scorched Earth, the Noxian Guillotines, the Static Shock especially. Because one thing that stuck out to me when I initially saw this list you know, with all these damage-based spells and the tribeams and the flocks and all that, is Swain. Because uh, early iterations of Draven Ezreal did mess around with Swain a lot. I was a big fan of Draven Swain more than I was of Draven Ezreal for a long time. Things have changed. The reason I think that it's going to be a while before we see that adaptation, or if we do see that adaptation, the reason that I don't think it'll stick, is because everything is really coming together in harmony to deal with this specific meta. And... You want Caitlyn because you need more trap generators, and Bandle City decks are not doing much to remove Caitlyn. Usually once she comes down, she's going to stick unless they can find the lucky buster shot. So you're getting just more traps into your opponent's deck. If she levels, she's a threat in her own right, but you really just want to stack as many traps into your opponent's deck as possible. Ezreal is in here because you need a little bit of 
ways to finish the game more or less on top of synergizing very well with Static Shock, which is one of those cards that you don't really get to run if you're not running Ezreal, it doesn't feel nearly as good, and with the traps in conjunction with Static Shock, you actually get to remove quite a few units, whereas if you had Swain in here instead, it wouldn't be as good. On top of that, because we are in a meta where we're playing a much more low-to-the-ground game, you're not really flocking an insane amount of things, we even see like Bandle Tree cutting down on flocks because of how bad it can be in that deck. Here it's a little bit more free because you have a lot of traps. Uh, is that Ravenous Flock is not a great champion spell to have a lot of the time. You know, you play a Swain, you have a Flock, you already have a Flock in hand, things get a little bit awkward if you're playing against a deck with a lot of low HP units, you just kind of have to sit on that, whereas Ezreal generating a Mystic Shot, both on attack and by just having a second Ezreal in hand, is something that I think players value a lot more in the current landscape. As such, this is going to affect your matchups, right? Because this deck is pretty 50-50 across the board, similar to how Draven Ezreal was. It's a little bit more swingy in some areas, and uh, it's kind of hard to tell because the deck is still in its early stages. Not a lot of people are playing it, or people that are playing it are playing it for nostalgia, they're playing it improperly, they're trying to play it like Draven Ezreal, where it is a different deck. You do have to play a little bit more controlly, and as such, your matchups are going to swing. I have not seen this deck able to beat Darkness just yet. The Vengeance just really does a lot against a deck whose sole threat, more or less, is Captain Farron, on top of the fact that it's not not too impossible for them to get a Vigar to stick around for a turn or connect with one Twisted Catalyzer to slip through the cracks, and then all of a sudden with Darkness at three damage, they are hitting every unit in your deck not named Captain Farron with the Darkness or whatever comes off the Tribeam Improbulator. Aloof Travelers, another card that a lot of players are playing that you do not deal with particularly well because Captain Farron is really your biggest threat and by a very wide margin. Tribeam, of course, being next does mean this is another key card that is susceptible to the Aloof Travelers. But outside of Darkness, you know, you're doing pretty well into a lot of the Demacia decks. It's really, really good into Bandle Tree as well, which is another rather popular Bandle City deck on ladder. So when we're talking about things like Scouts and Demacia Yordles in Arms and Bandle Tree, all these Bandle Go Wide decks, that's really where you're looking to shine through your traps and your flocks and, you know, just racking up the Caitlyns, the Ezreal procs. They're not really killing you before you get down Captain Farron. They're not interacting with your hand. And a good Tribeam can really swing any board base matchup. That is where this deck originally lived and died was, can I get a big enough tri-beam? There are a lot of matchups that just fold to this straight away. Frostbite midrange. It's not super prevalent right now, but it's one of those things that kind of got pushed out by the popularity of Draven Ezreal in what was otherwise a relatively okay meta for it. This card will always be something that players are keeping in the back of their minds when they're looking at how to counter a meta. And right now, Tribeam and Probulator is doing great against decks like Pantheon and Demacia Yordles in Arms. Uh, it's just such a great card if you can high roll into it, you know, get that big ancient crocolith or what have you. There's a lot of great targets for it. And even on average, you're going to have a pretty good time. They're not releasing a lot of low statted, overcosted units in new expansions, they're they're generally averaging out. If you hit a 5-drop, you're probably going to get a 5-5. Five, five. And that's obviously the, the highlight of the deck, right, is this Tribeam Improbulator. As you can see here, when we take a look at the stats, there are 19 3-cost cards in the deck, so it's important to remember not to get too greedy with it. You know, sometimes you do just need to do this for tempo, even though you are a little bit less of a tempo-oriented deck than Draven Ezreal was, you do still sometimes just need to get your 5-drop on board and start to either proactively win the game or force your opponent to block, things like that. It, this deck is harder than Draven Ezreal, I would imagine. I haven't gotten to play with it too much myself, so I'm not as experienced as I would like to be, but uh, like I said, the deck is still in its early iterations. I think there's a lot more experimentation that we're going to see get to come out with it. Uh, there's not a lot of champions that, like, stick out to me as things that we want to put in here. You don't want to, like, try to turn this into a Jace deck. It's not really synergistic. Maybe Heimerdinger is something that we'll see in the future, but for now, like I mentioned, the Caitlyn and the Ezreal both have very specific spots in the deck, with Ezreal incentivizing and paying off the Static Shock, as well as Caitlyn loading up on the traps for just the very specific meta that we find ourselves in. Now, the balance patch is coming in a couple of weeks. This is susceptible to change, and if the meta shifts, then we might see a shift in this deck as well, but now that it's back on the map for some players, I don't think they're willing to let it go. This is a very nostalgic archetype for a lot of people, and I think that now that the gates have been open and players have started to top fight nights with it and do well on ladder with it, I don't think that's a gate that we get to close again. The Bandle City variant of this deck has been figured out, which is to say that Draven Ezreal died shortly after the release of Bandle City. This deck is now thriving in a Bandle City environment, and uh, once we get more games and more data and things like that on it, you know, we'll try to keep you updated on the different variations that players are going for, but for right now, I think it's pretty locked in on Caitlyn and Ezreal. And there's still a lot of different things that you can put in the deck. Uh, one of the things that stuck out to me as a pretty cool tech from Fight Night was Pharos Financer. 
you know, just get a little bit more top end into the deck in terms of generating that you know, six cost spell. Uh, progress day, always something that to keep in mind. Uh, Shock Blast, something that's great when generated, but not really something that you want to be main decking in something like this. Yes, it hits a 3 HP threshold that you don't really have access to otherwise, but like I had mentioned, you're more looking to string together two card removal spells and sort of push through your opponent and kill them rather than uh, sit here and, and Shock Blast every unit or get excited a unit, go back to the Ballistic Bot, get excited, I don't think so. I don't really think that's where the deck is headed. But ultimately, the direction that this deck is going to move in the future is up to you, the player at home, that brings this to a ladder or a tournament or anything like that. And if you're looking for a tournament to bring it to, you can head over to giantslayer.tv slash LOR, where you'll find a sign-up link for Fight Night Legends. If you want to get on camera, bring this deck. Don't bring this deck. It's totally up to you. Now, what I want to know in the comments is, is this the future iteration? Are we, are we going to move on to Swain? Are we going to stay where we are? Are we going to regress to Draven Ezreal and put all of the discard cards back in? Maybe the balance patch will impact things. Maybe it won't. This, as I had mentioned, this is a very meta-dependent deck. But thank you so much for watching. My name is Boulevard for Giant Slayer TV. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video, as well as ring that little bell notification to get updates on when these videos are going live. Follow both myself on Twitter, at Caster boulevard as well as giant slayer lor so that you can figure out when all of these videos and the articles are going live get up to date on all the hot new stuff coming out in the legends of runeterra competitive scene